welcome to Before the Bat, the Gotham podcast, your guide to the TV show Gotham and everything Batman, and this time we're talking Batman the Killing Joke, the movie. Uh, Wolf and I already discussed the comic book, so now we're getting to the animated feature. So, of course, Lil is, is back again. Hey, what's up? And, and Tyler's here also. Hey, what's going on? Alright, let's jump into this. Wait. Did we all see it at the movie theaters or no? no. I saw it at Comic Con and then I saw it at the movie theater, so. No, I just got the blue. I wanted to see it at the movie theater. Uh, Janine and I were actually going to go, but then we decided, you know what? It was going to be like 25 bucks, and then like a week later, it's going to show up from Amazon. So, we decided to save the money because we're poor. I don't know why they only did one day, because don't you think if they, they did would've... two days in my area? Yeah, they, they, they did actually. Yeah, they. They added a second day, but I'm like, you know, if this would have been like a regular run, how much money would they? They probably wouldn't have made. They a lot made four point three million dollars just with those two nights. So. Yeah, but they probably. No, I mean, they could probably. I'm just saying, yeah, it would be more, but I'm just saying that's pretty yeah. impressive. Oh yeah. It'd been nice if they would have like released it right after it aired at Comic Con or something. Mm-hmm. Just because like releasing it so close to the DVD release, like like I said, we wanted to go. We just. Money is tight, and we'd already pre-ordered the DVD. Well, they, what they did the to encourage people was the documentary, which I don't think is on the actual... Well, it wasn't on the digital release. I don't know if it's on the DVD release or the Blu-ray release. Because I only do digital I think it is. So, Because the digital came out first, and then they did the <clears throat> Blu-ray and the uh, DVD. So It was a weird rollout, yep. but... Okay. So, anyway... So, <laughs> what did everyone? Sorry. That's okay. No, I was gonna say, what did everyone think of the actual movie? Well, let let's start at the beginning. What does everyone think of the that? The first thirty minutes suck. I think we can all. Okay, hold on. I just wanted to ask one thing, like just for me, what is with the story of the Killing Joke? What is it that intrigues you? Like, what what is it that you like about the story? I always like the idea of the proposed Joker backstory. That's what always kind of drove me to that book. I think it's, it's like, it's, it's not that long. And basically it's a quick synopsis of Batman and Joker's relationship. It's like, yeah, you know, this is nuts. One of us is going to die one day. And basically he's ultimate evil. (laughs) I don't mm-hmm. think he, I think he's like the true definition of chaotic, uh, evil, definitely, if I ever saw one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, chaotic neutral, actually. He's just, he, like, like the Dark Knight quote from the movie, you know, he's just a dog chasing a car. He doesn't know what he's gonna do when he gets it. Yeah, but Except that's, that's a whole another debate. He was very, very strategic and smart in the Dark Knight. Listen. He only fooled everybody that he was just chaos and random. That's his disguise. I mean, I think, Part of the thing about this story was just the fact that it's it changed the Joker from where he was in the comics. It made him darker and uh, more, like you said, evil than what we had been used to at that time in the comics. Yeah, but it was also at that time where everything had to be dark and gritty mandates. Yeah, (laughs) especially Batman, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no. That you well, if you said that first thirty minutes sucks, that's the original content they tacked onto this. Yeah, exactly. It's like no, we didn't need this. I know you needed to pad your runtime, but we could have done something a little bit better because it really makes Batgirl look like doo doo. Yes. Okay. I like the idea of adding the, a Batgirl story. Why couldn't it have just been something as simple as the story of when Batman and Batgirl and even like, after Jason Todd's death, um, captured the Joker and locked him up. So you could have saw more of Batman um, dealing with the quote-unquote abyss That's... and him and Batgirl working together. And the idea of showing Batgirl as... Because I always took it... Batgirl looked at, like, he said, like, she's fun. She's having fun. It's a game. She's very, I want to use the word, innocent, but... Um, in, and that's what kind of makes what happens to her in The Killing Joke even more powerful. But I feel like with that prologue, they completely took that away from her. Exactly. They, they created I... some third-rate villain to pseudo-be-a-Joker-esque idea for her. 
like with the obsession and all that. And it just, it just didn't play well. Like it just, it made Batgirl look stupid. Like you said. Yeah. I just, I, when I heard they were going to do this, I thought, you know, yeah, that we were going to get a prologue of Batman and Batgirl interacting with the Joker. And then, you know, the, the, the actual killing joke story was going to be like his revenge, but yeah. Can we just address the elephant in the room? Bat Babs, uh, what the damn hell? Nobody likes this relationship. Why would you do that to us? Why? I really, okay, I really believe it's a Bruce Tim thing. Because if you yes. watch in the later animated series, they hint at it in the mystery of Batwoman and in Batman Beyond that Bruce and Barbara had some sort of relationship. I feel like it's a mandate by Bruce Tim and his yes, crew. Yes, totally. Like it's something they, they slid up in there. But no, like, I can understand Batgirl's obsession and interest in Batman, but I would never see Batman, Batman giving it. No, that was completely out of line. I just, I think they did that to give Batman extra, I don't He's know. Batman, he doesn't need anything extra. He's all, he's like the Hulk, he's always angry! I know, um, but it's just like, yeah, he, he, he couldn't have been angry at the Joker just because this was a friend of his who was, you know, who he attacked and a protege her, and, after yeah. the j- just, ugh. and her father. I just wanted to cry. And her father's his friend. Yeah, that's not enough motivation. They had to add that. Well, I guess they said see, it's, ra- it's rated R. What can we get away with? Basically, see, they went I think the rated, the rated R was like a ploy just to be like, oh, rated R. Because those PG-13 um, ones were really pushing it, like Justice League War, and all those were already in Arkham. Assault on Arkham was re- I was really surprised that was PG-13. Yes. Because, yeah. I mean, take out the, I mean, we really didn't even get much of a sex scene, but take that out, and I mean, you could have done this as PG-13. Oh, yeah. It was just... And I they didn't want like, people okay. to worry that they were gonna like, you know what I mean, tone yeah. down the violence and stuff like that. I think that that's all that was. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to jump ahead in a discussion point, but I feel like because they made it rated R, they cut corners to make the budget less for fear of not recouping the money. Because, mm, yeah. and that's looking at the animation. Like certain scenes, I felt almost like it was a motion comic. Like old school style animation where, like everything in the in the image is frozen and one thing is moving, like the scene that should be like amazing and give me chills when he takes the mask off and he puts his hands up and he's laughing as he you know comes out of the chemicals and he's the Joker. It's just like his head bobbing. I so just... I mean, I feel like they they certain times when the characters would move, it's like they. They took out little like every other picture or like drawing, so they moved a little choppier. I wouldn't have even minded if they got closer to like the actual comic book art. I think if they would have went back to like the original Batman the animated series animation, yeah. that would have given it like that tone. I think. Yeah. Like that darker tone. I mean, is this everybody's uh, favorite to post theory for the the Joker origin though? I know it's mine. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Mine too. I mean, I like. I wish they would have done a little bit something more along the lines of because I mean, he even says like, "I prefer multiple choice," mm-hmm. and that's kind of the whole point about this. So I think with <clears throat> with the film, they could have done something where. In that dialogue, he said a few other lines about other options or or even just the transition from Joker scenes into the flashbacks been a little bit more felt more natural. Yeah, I always I always feel with the Joker origin that's that's based that's basically the story. It's just some of the details might be different. Like maybe he wasn't a stand up comedian, maybe he was like a straight up criminal like Jack Nicholson in the first Batman. Yeah. But yeah, that's for the basics. It's it's Joker origin. I mean, What's the they, next I mean, topic definitely, point? <laughs> <laughs> they definitely made the uh, the Red Hood idea and everything more canon, and of course the creation of Oracle. Mm-hmm. Oh, the mid end credit scene! I was just like, oh snaps! They actually did remember to do that. Good for them. So yeah, I was excited. Well, I kind of, I felt that was coming during the prologue, 
when they have the moment where she talks about setting up all the computers and helping her dad with the program, mm-hmm. I felt like that was a little line of, oh, we're going to get Oracle that way. And then it was like, like it's kind of be on the lookout for this movie. <laughs> But no, if they really wanted to cash in when she first appeared as Oracle, that wasn't she helping the Suicide Squad? They could they, they could totally put out like a. a and that's why everybody thought Squad that animation. Jenna Malone girl was a uh, Batgirl in the supercut of Batman vs Superman because Suicide Squad was coming out. But you know how that turned out. <laughs> <laughs> she was Star Labs assistant number one. Exactly. <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Um. I thought that they did do the um, funhouse scenes justice, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think they did most of the Killing Joke story, like you know the stuff that actually happened in the comic. They they got pretty they got pretty close. I mean, they even took didn't they take like actual dialogue from the book? Yes. Yeah. I reread the book earlier in that morning, mm-hmm. um, just waiting for it because I had ordered it from Amazon and I was waiting for it to show up. So I reread it. And then, you know, shortly later, we, Jenny and I watched it, and like you said, it was it was pretty dead on with the dialogue mm-hmm. and everything. So, I, I I mean, things that like nitpicking is like in the book when the Joker um, is being sold the amusement park, and he turns around and says he loves it. Mm-hmm. It's a very happy bright reaction that's creepy, but like in the film they kept it very dark, like his reaction. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, because that's kind of, was the humor to it at the time was, the Joker was like, I love it! And was like, so happy about it. And, but yet it was creepy. So... I did think that the direction was wonderful, so I do want to shout out Sam Liu for that one. I thought that all the voice work was just super phenomenal, and it was just so great having Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill in a booth together. Just like, you know, if you're that old school, you love Batman, the animated series, it just definitely just, my little heroes and my arms raised up when you hear Conroy first come in, and then when you hear Mark Hamill and the first interaction they have, you just, it's like flashbacks to all that childhood goodness, but like in some sick, twisted way. (laughs) Oh no, I agree. I even like that Hamill's performance as flashback Joker, like pre-Joker. Like his voice is distinguishable. Mm-hmm. It's not just like a mellow Joker. Like it's it is different. Yeah, it was so great that those two back together. That's another reason I don't know. I don't understand why they didn't have more Joker in that first half hour. Because I'm like, you have I, more I think Campbell. they definitely felt the need to play up the fact. Uh, they were trying to correct the whole thing about uh, Barbara Gordon just being Joker's victim. They wanted to, like, flush her out. But they just mm-hmm. made her look like more of a bigger of a victim. Do you know what I mean? With the first. Yes. So it was just kind of, like, counterintuitive what they did with it. But I think that's why we got the first 30 minutes instead of all that interaction between the two. Yeah, because at mean, the end of the day, it is her story, and it has a really, it makes a really big, deep impact with that character. And they were trying to, but they just kind of didn't do quite as good a job. As they could. Yeah, I I agree with you. She does look like more of a victim, I think, because oh, the rapey, the rapey, creepy guy almost gets her in the beginning, but oh no, wait, they're like not literally thirty right seconds there. into it, you're just like, um, did he just slip her a Mickey? What? What? I know he went like old Bill Cosby on her. I was like, really. <laughs> 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 I'm like, are we going there? Allegedly. But, yeah, <laughs> allegedly. But no, I was like, okay, are we really going there? And then she, like, locks herself in the vault. I'm like, okay. And then Batman comes crying. I was just like, oh my god. When he ejects from the sea, I was laughing. Everybody turned around and looked at me. <laughs> so silly. Oh, that 30 minutes was rough. Oh, that, that's another reason that, like, maybe they shouldn't have had sex. But, you know, Batman could have just, like, been like, no, wait, hold on. You know, maybe you're not in your right mind after, you know, recent events. You know, let's... let's that would have you know. made a lot more sense. That would have yeah. been completely... Like, her whole, it's just sex. Why don't you talk to me? I'm like, really? That's how you're going to make Batgirl's character? But the, the, but even Batman came across bad in that scene because it's like oh man so Batman's just thinking with his Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like everybody knows Batman's asexual, bro. Unless it's Talia or Catwoman, he's asexual. <laughs> yeah, he can at least control it. Yeah. 
The man's a master of everything. I'm pretty sure he's a master of that as well. It's like he knows well, the master baiter of fish bait. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say a master controller. <laughs> but I was just like, he came in pretty easy to I'm like, what's in that belt, Viagra? <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is not sponsored by Viagra, but if they would like to, please contact us. It's 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 bad Viagra. Viagra Cialis. We're not picking whoever wants to sponsor this podcast. <laughs> we'll 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 talk up and promote no matter whatever it is. But I, I do feel like the ending kind of didn't live up to the book. I will. Say yes, that. thank it, it was, you. Because they didn't leave it as open-ended as the book, I guess. Yeah, and the the ending in the book was more dark, like more in shadow. This was, you could see everything. Mm-hmm. That, and like, if you look at the art in the final panels, it's like, I always took it, there's that beam of light, and the water is raining, and it's slowly like, you get the one panel of the water crossing the line, mm-hmm. and the next panel where it's gone, and that was always kind of my idea of like, yeah. did Batman cross the line? That's where people get the idea from, you know? Like, he did it! That's the killing joke! He actually did it! But that in, but that in the movie wasn't even ambiguous. Like, it wasn't really... I mean, I know there's the audio of where Joker stops laughing, mm-hmm. and Batman keeps laughing, but to me, it's not as powerful as what it could have been. Yeah. Because if you don't have Batman attacking the Joker there... I, that ending always got to me because I'm like, okay, I, I understand why Batman was respecting Gordon's wishes and bringing Joker in by the book, but I'm like, would you really stand there and laugh with the Joker if he attacked Gordon and everything he did to Barbara? Would you really be standing there and, I mean, laughing with anyone, but especially the Joker? For real. Like, ha ha ha, push you off a cliff. He exactly. slipped. I, I mean, if he, he tripped and fell. I mean, if it's like that imp- ambiguous scene at the end of the book where everyone's like, oh, was he choking him? I'm uh, okay, maybe then, but to just stand there and laugh with him? Yeah. Just rub me the wrong way. But I still think it was overall pretty great, I won't lie. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of the musical number? That that, That came out of nowhere and it just was like, I actually liked it. It felt like one of those um, just off the wall episodes of um, Batman the Animated Series, like Legends of the Dark Knight, or you know what I mean? <gasps> yeah. Mm-hmm. But didn't he sing? Didn't he sing in the book? I'm trying to remember. He I did thought something. He, he, he either sang or he had some kind of speech like that. Yeah, yeah it was like I, I think it was a speech. Okay. <laughs> Mark Campbell's like, I want to sing. He, so he's I, he's preparing for his return to Flash for that musical episode with Music Monster. <laughs> Then they cross over with Supergirl, yeah. The Music Meister. If they don't get David Cassidy to play the Music Meister, I don't even know what life is, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that Mark Campbell, that guy can't, can't get any work, huh? <laughs> oh, what'd you guys think of Ray Wise as Commissioner Gordon, by the way? Um, I, Not bad. I was kind of bummed uh, they couldn't get the the guy from... Is that the guy from Batman? I want to say it's not. From the anime, no, the guy no. he died. He passed yeah, away. Yeah, okay. Because this guy was from like Jeepers Creepers too, and I'm like that. And and um Reaper from the, C- the CW, and I'm just like that's not the original one. No, I just I I understand why they did it because that was the older Gordon and um in the story, but it just seems weird to uh, like the last couple of years in the comics and every other movie, it seems like they've been de-aging Gordon and all of a sudden we get this older Gordon again. Well, we kind of had to because of yeah, where Bob of is in a career, yeah. but yeah. I, I yeah, mean, I, everybody's age is all off. Like Gordon's been de-aged. Somehow Barbara was like an adult, then all of a sudden went to back to being a teenager and one issue of comics. Okay. And so okay. Okay. I'm, I'm rewatching the movie as we as we do this, and I just saw the sex scene. There. It's like real quick, but I don't think you need it rated R for that because that the whole scene with like Harley and Deadshot in the Suicide Squad animated thing was a lot more. Yeah, uh, I think it's, sex it, scene. it's that, but it's also isn't there an animation? There's a rule where you can't point a gun directly at the camera. Yeah, I think it is something Probably. weird like and, that. Because I remember them talking about how they got away with it with Mister Freeze and Heart of Ice. Because mm-hmm. it was a freeze gun and it shot. Yeah, out, it wasn't that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how they well, got away with the, with the animated series because it was like lasers. 
Yeah, because I don't. Yeah. Even think, uh, I don't. I don't think the sex scene is what makes it rated R. Because on the back of the box, so you, it's saying, I think it's it was saying, a lot of the nudity too, maybe, quote unquote, in the funhouse scene with Gordon or whatever in the pictures. Well, the, I don't know. On the back of the box, a lot of it's, it, it, it says I think it's R violence. What says bloody images and disturbing content? Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like you have Joker point the gun and the way he shoots her dead on, and mm-hmm. like her falling on the coffee table and just laying there. That whole scene. That's what I right think there was. Yeah, which I feel is very well animated in comparison to the entire film. I think that scene is the most yeah. um, quality of animation. You can get more violence. You can get creepier. You can show more blood. You know. You know the one thing that's always bothered me about this story, though, is that nobody notices that it's a Joker decoy except for Batman. Really? That's I know. I, that's what I told you when we reviewed the comic. I'm like. How, how stupid are Gotham cops and everybody who works at Arkham? Nobody knew, you know. In the I, movie, it was just even worse than the book, though. I was just like, oh, my God. Because the guy didn't even have a Joker voice. It's like, come on. <laughs> exactly. I mean, unless the Joker thought, escaped like a half hour ago. Maybe. I thought it would have been cool. Like I, I told you, as we were watching, like, wouldn't it have been neat if they got, like, Troy Baker to do the uh, voice of fake Joker? Since he has a very similar Mark Hamill sounding voice, That's I love his Joker. But I'm just saying, like that would have been kind of neat. But that's just me. Oh, there's there's Barbara making the awkward phone call. <laughs> hey, what's up, baby? Why don't you answer me? Why don't you talk call to me? me? You hit it and quit it. Why don't you call me? And then now she's she's gonna call Dick. Um, Bruce is being a jack. <laughs> But, yeah. Why? And then and then Dick Grayson will say, "Why?" Uh, never mind. They gotta call somebody else. Gotta go. <laughs> you guys feel about Terry Strong as Batgirl? By the way, I mean Terry Strong does everything. I know. Well, I mean she she did Batgirl in, in the Gotham Knights. You know, she was the voice. No, it was Bat- um, it was Batman Arkham, right? No, it, Arkham. She did Harley Quinn. Well, Batgirl, she didn't. She didn't did the the a, second animated series when oh, they, yeah, when they changed right. up the artwork, which is like referred oh, to as the Gotham Knights or Batman. something. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. I just know her as um, from Rugrats, All Grown Up, <laughs> and um, Bubbles, Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> That's how. I, oh, oh, My Little Pony. That's how I always remember. her. <laughs> and she she did Harley too. Not Raven. Harley Quinn. Yeah, she did Harley on. On the Arkham games. And, and then that was the, her in the voiceover for Arrow, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So, yeah. Don't even get me started on the... Oh, did you we see can't the pictures? Put Harley. Did you see the pictures? Tara we, Strong must have been walking around Comic-Con dressed as Harley Quinn and, like, no one knew it was her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she does kind of favor it. It doesn't take much for that cosplay. <laughs> Yeah, plus she's uh, blonde and everything. She kind of, she kind of looks like Harley Quinn a little bit too. Yes, she, she could play her live action if she really wanted cool. to. <laughs> yeah, in a CW version way, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome. But what kills me, like you just said about the CW, is they were like all about we're not going to have, we don't mind if there's a TV version and a movie version, but then they kill off everybody in the Suicide Squad that um, connects. <laughs> To the Suicide Squad movie, like Deadshot, Amanda Waller. What are you even complaining about? Disappeared. You're getting Superman on Supergirl, while we get Felicity. Wait, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting yeah, there. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, no Batman. That's what they said when they were doing Suicide Squad. But now all of a sudden they're like, you know what? We can do two versions of every character. It's okay. We'll bring in Superman. We'll bring in the ones they're not uh, sure they're warming up to. Sure. <laughs> Well, so that's the why thing, they, they even had they, that, they, um, they had an ambiguous uh, they had an ambiguous departure of Katana also in Arrow. You never really knew what happened to her. They, yeah. they, in the pu- in the public's eye, they only want um, them to uh, remember one dead shot. They're like, okay, there's only one jet dead shot. And he gets jiggy with it. Come on, Will Smith joke. All right, so who wants to go first and grade this thing? Sure. Uh, what kind of grades are we looking at? Do we want to do letter grades? 
Want to do thumbs up, thumbs sure. down? <laughs> that, oh, that's too easy. <laughs> I I say okay. Mm, letter grade wise, I will go with a B minus. That's because I have to take into account. I have to look at it as a complete film. Okay, that's including the prologue. I feel like if I if I rate just the the actual killing joke story, I would give it an A minus. Only the minus because I feel the artwork and animation style is lacking. But because I have to include the horrible prologue, that's why it's rated lower. Oh, definitely. I would say a straight up B because, uh, like you said, definitely that that first thirty minutes uh, brings it down. Uh, the the animation, I think, it's good, but it could have been better. Plus, like I said, most of it's a lot. It's it's too too bright. It needed to be darker. I I realize you know they want people to see everything, but for this for this for a Batman story, especially this one, it seemed a little too bright sometimes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, straight up B for me. But Lilith. Okay, I'm gonna come in and be the most positive. Oh God, I gave it a B plus. I hated the prologue, but everything else really did work for me, other than the little ending. And like I said, I loved how they gave us the confirmation for Oracle in the mid credit scene. So I was just like, okay, yes, I'm looking forward to this Oracle movie because you know that's what that was about. So. Oh yes, let's get it. Let's get a Nightwing Oracle movie. Exactly, just one step closer. Yes. Cause I just I just need to get Nightwing away from like Damien, that whole little Batman and Son saga that they're doing. I just want him with Barbara and I know that they'll have to incorporate that. So that got me hyped. It, it ended on a good note for me. So that's why it's a You mean you don't want, you want you really want to see that scene of uh um uh, Dick, I have to tell you something. Bruce uh, and I kind we can, of, we uh, can just gloss uh, over that because that was not that was not well received. So we'll we'll gloss over that in the next movie. Because a lot of people love the Dick and Bab stuff, so yeah. yeah, yeah. She's like, like, yeah, um, yeah. Just get, just get, <laughs> just get them romantic. Get them up on the, you know, that scene with them up on the trapeze. Yeah, forget the whole Bruce thing. <laughs> Basically, that's all I want. Yes, but I mean, no. We, I mean, we're we're all pretty similar. We went from B plus to B minus. So I mean, we pretty much agreed. We're all in the same ballpark. Yes. We, we're just we know some of us are just eating popcorn. Said. Other of us are having beer. That's all. We're we're all in the same abandoned amusement park. God, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like, uh, oh. hmm. Phil has a question. Oh no! Tell I was going to say what did what did everyone think about the inclusion of like the 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 circus or the carnival freaks? I guess because they they were just like background players in the book, and here they actually like attack Batman and. I just kept I, thinking of that one was... movie. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I could. My thing with that um, was I kept kind of trying to get to uh, the idea of where is uh, where did they come from? Yeah, I think they were just to kill more time. Of course. And what's sad is if you wanted to kill more time, you could have had. You could have been uh, just worked in more of the the uh, the story of just Joker and Batman's relationship, mm-hmm. and the fact that like he killed Robin. Like we could have hinted on that because I mean, in the comics, that's kind of where we were at the time of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could they could so. have us, like, some quick flashes of the ki- of uh, death in the family. Yeah, definitely. But on, but on that cheery note, is there any final thoughts? No, I mean, I, it's definitely like I, um, I've been, I really love the DC animated films, and I want to say like, I do think it's kind of interesting that this year we're at four of them. It's like they're really amping them up now. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's more better received than their actual live action universe, so. Just saying. <laughs> I just think it's really interesting because I mean, used to, you know, what was it? We would have one every year Years. or every other year, and then all of a sudden, um, 
then all of a sudden we started getting two a year. Then we were like, oh, man, three. Now we got four this year. So it's just it's just that's interesting to me that they're just amping that up more and more. Mm-hmm. No problems, though. So can we get a Young Justice Season 3 then? <laughs> just going to throw that out there? Yes. Netflix. It would, it would be nice. Considering that they end it with, uh, they end it like, hey, Dark Side's involved. And I'm like, oh, of course he is. <laughs> oh, now Tyler sounds like me. <laughs> I know, I was going to say Lil's favorite. Well, it just seems like there's like, okay, there's only so many villains with the DC at times. They're like, we'll start with this one, and then, oh, look, Dark Side's connected. It, it's either Lex or Dark Side, yeah. Or the Joker. All right, is that it? Definitely. Okay. Uh, share your thoughts with us. Are we crazy for our thoughts on this movie or just in general? Don't you mean loony? Uh, or mad? Okay, email us before the bat at gmail.com. <laughs> Facebook is before the bat, the Gotham podcast. Twitter is at before the bat pod. Uh, follow us because I usually uh, live tweet Gotham when it's uh, new. So check that out this year. Uh, and Lilith, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. If you're still on Tumblr before Yahoo deletes it, it's lilhellfire.tumblr.com. And you can check out my website, of course, lilhellfire.com. And if you're on Instagram and you like weird random stuff, Lil Hellfire86. Tyler Patrick. You can find me here uh, on the Krypton Report. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or you can find me uh, basically online anywhere at JTY Patrick. And you can always email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And check me out with Lilith and Tyler, both on the upcoming Legends of DC podcast, where we're going to be discussing all the uh, CW DC shows, Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow. Vixen. Yeah. Somebody will do it. Bye, zombie. (laughs) Somebody will do it somewhere sometime. (laughs) That's true. Yeah, if someone wants to do it, hey, come on in. The door's open. All right. Let me review. It's like, let me review the quick uh, Vixen animated series. Well, did you see they're doing another animated thing now on CWC coming up, uh, The Ray? Oh, yeah. It should have been Constantine, the animated series, between the two of us. Yeah. (laughs) The three of us. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That would have made a lot more sense. Since they're not, no plans for a live action Constantine, supposedly. Yeah, not this year. It. It's funny because you have them talk about no plans for a live action Constantine, and then you have uh, them mention like it would be a shame for Constantine not to show up in Legends. Mm. I'm like, yeah, it would be. No. It'd be a shame for him just not to show back up, period. You know your numbers would go up. Alright, is that it then? Sign off, Phil. Sign yeah. us off. Alright, everyone. Uh, come back next time. Uh, we'll have more specials coming up, and Gotham will be back in a month or so. So, until then, same bad time, same bad channel. The Fuck Gotham Podcast.